Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to take a look at events in Livewire 3 and also learn how to communicate between two separate Livewire components and also how to pass data between them. So let's get started. I have prepared a simple demo for today. I have a user creation form on the left, which is our component A. And then I have a completely separate component. So these are completely separate components. A user list, which is basically a simple table with pagination. And right now, if I go ahead and I'll click create a random user, and I click create. And if you notice, we have 16 results, right? And I click on create. We do successfully create the user, but my list does not update. And the reason that it's happening is because library components are like an island. So if one component updates, it ha will have nothing to do with the second component, right? So each component is completely isolated and independent. So our user list isn't updating. So we need to use events to basically send an event from our create user component to our user list component and I'll tell it, hey, I would like, or any user was created or update the list. So let's go ahead and learn how we can do that. Now, before we do that, guys, I want to show you guys both these components. The first component is a registration form, which is what we have created over the last eight episodes. I haven't updated the code. So we just have a simple create method that creates a user on our database. And then the second component is called users list. And it's a bare bone component with just with pagination and then we're passing in the users and displaying them, okay, using a for each. And I have both of them basically included on my welcome.php file, okay, nothing crazy, very simple stuff. Now, the way communication between components works is you would have your first component, which is component A, dispatch an event, and then on your second component, you would listen for that event and then perform some sort of action. So to dispatch an event, you would do this dispatch. This is a method that is available in the component class and then you need to tell what is the name of your comp your event so i'm gonna say user created so we are dispatching a user created event and you also have the option to pass in some data with your event and that is basically passed in as additional argument so vs code is actually recommending you can pass in as many data as you would like in our case i'm going to pass in the id of the user we created so i'm going to pass in user id you can pass in anything you like. You can pass in a collection. I can pass the user itself. I can also pass in array. It's up to you. Why not? Let's pass the user itself. So just like that. And then on your second component to listen for that event, uh, you can listen to, to those events on a method. So I can maybe listen to it on the render method or I can create a separate method to listen for it. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to say public function update list. And then in order for this method to listen for it, we can use an annotation. And that is done by basically using PHP 8 annotations. And we need to import the on attribute. And it is livewire attributes on. I believe there is another uh, second class of same name, but this is the one you need to import. And then inside here, you can enter the name of the event you want to listen for. So in our case is user uh, created, just like that. And then to receive the data, you can just define them as arguments user. Now, if you want it to be optional, you can maybe make it null. So it's an optional argument. And by default, this will actually go ahead and work. So what we can do is just test it and see if it is refreshing our list or not. So I'm going to go back. Uh, right now, we have 17 results. I'm going to create a new user and I'm running out of <laughs> unique email. So I'm just putting random numbers and then I'm going to enter a random password, click create and boom. It is showing 18. So it is working just like that. And the reason is basically Livewire is rerunning this render. Now, if all you're doing is re-rendering, we could technically get rid of this update list and move our on attribute over here. And this will also work. So uh, let me create one more user. And click create. And it's basically 19. So you can have your... Uh, listen on events basically on any method you have on your component okay it doesn't have to be you know a different method than the, your render method okay so render will also work now i'm going to move it back to update list because i want to be able to dd the user so and again just to show you guys that the data was successfully passed i'm going to dd our user that we are passing in in the registration form so let's go ahead and create another user click create. And as you can see, 
we received the user as an array, okay? So just like that, very convenient. So you can pass, communicate between your components and passing as many data as you want. Now, one thing to do, keep in mind, in some cases, for example, you want to communicate between these two components, but you are not performing any action on your first component. So let me give you guys an example. Let's say I, on my register form, I'm going to open it up. I have a button to reload the list. Okay, so I'm going to name it reload list. And what I want to happen is whenever I click on this reload list button, and let me copy the CSS from here, actually. So I'm going to move this here. Reload list. So I want a button on my first component to reload the second component. But this button isn't actually performing any action on my registration form, right? So right now, one way you may do it is, for example, you might say wire. Uh, click and we need to do prevent and then reload list and obviously this will run it inside our register component so I would have to create it and say public function uh, reload list and then from here I would have to then dispatch you know user created all right something like that or create a separate event so let's go ahead and test this out uh, obviously as I'm calling it, we are getting null, so I'm going to go on my user list and get rid of this DD. Reload here, and then let me go ahead and make this paginate like four. So right now, this will work, as you can see. However, if we open up the network, our command line developer tools, I'm going to make this be like two again, so we can see some difference. And I'm going to click on reload list. If we scroll up, we actually get two network requests. So the first request is this button calling reload list, which is on our first component. So it's making a network request to our uh, register user component, right? And we can actually see. So it's making an, a, a request to our reload list method. And then the reload list is dispatching an event to our users list component, which is the second one, right? So it's saying dispatch user created, right? You can see that all of these. So we are making two network calls, which is going to be very slow. Now, what we can do to reduce this extra network request is by using Alpine.js. And the way you do it is you can go on your, where you're dispatching the regular event or regular action. And instead of doing wire click, we can say, at click, which is using Alpine.js. And if you are not familiar with Alpine.js, you don't really need to have a full understanding. This is just how you dispatch an event using Alpine. And then say dollar sign dispatch, this patch, and then pass in the event you want to dispatch, which is user uh, created, okay? You can also pass in data the same way we did on our library component. So now in this case, I think this button will go ahead and submit the form. So I'm going to say, type button so it won't go ahead and submit the form so i'll reload the page guys and i'm going to open up inspect and to make sure this will change i'll go ahead and update this user list to like i don't know two elements and i'm going to click reload list and as you can see we only get one network request made and it's also updated and if you click on it we can see like inspect the request itself, the payload, we can see we are doing a dispatch of type user created. Okay, so that's one way you can reduce your network request uh, when you don't need to actually perform any action on your component that is dispatching it. And that is it, guys, for basics of events in LIBOR and communicating between your components. Now, there are a few more things you can do. But I think this is the most commonly used type of behavior you will have in your components. And it's quite powerful and you can do very complicated behaviors using it. So if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below, guys. And as always, don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you get notified of the latest videos. Have a great day and I'll see you guys on the next episode. Bye.